right. Ready? So we're going to call the meeting to order. Um, we are located at Fort Oh, Neighborhood Partners Plan Board at, at City Hall at 495 Main Street, fifth floor large conference room. Um, this is June 5th, 2018 at 2 p.m. Call, we're calling this meeting to order. And, um, are, we oh. uh, are we in compliance with um, the open meeting law? Yes, we are. Okay. Okay, can we do roll call? Sure. Member, uh, Member Toussaint? I'm here. Member Holmes? Present. Member Kirk? Present. Member Schultz? Present. Member Kilponen? Present. Member Guerrero? Here. Member Christensen? Here. Member Walters? Present. Member Sandecki? Present. Member Qualley is... She's right there, but you can't... She's excused. <laughs> uh, member Bonaventura? Present. Uh, member... Oh, she is. Uh, member Quali just uh, arrived. Um, member Williams will be here shortly, and Member Powell will also be here shortly. We do have a quorum. Okay. okay, so now. Okay, so public comment during the portion of the agenda must be limited to matters on the agenda for action. If you wish to be heard, you remain for the record the amount of discussion as well as the amount of time and single speaker is allowed may be limited. Anyone? Okay. Um, possible action to approve for final minutes by the reference of the regular meetings of June 12, 19, June 19, June 26, of 2017. We move a motion to approve the minutes. Second. I move to approve the final minutes for June 19th, 12th, and 26th of 2017 uh, by Member Sandecki. Do I have a second? Second. Uh, seconded by Member Bonaventura. Do we have all in favor? Uh, aye. Aye. All, any opposed? No. Okay. Finding no opposition, may we move on? The bylaws, review the bylaws and responsibilities. Skip one. Oh, this discussion for possible action of election of chair and vice chair. Okay. Assistant City Attorney Terry Ponichello, your bylaws require a chair and a vice chair for this board. They're uh, elected, elected annually. Uh, typically, we just take nominations from the floor for the chair position and nominations from the floor for the vice chair position. I will tell you that um, because of open meeting law, we you can do it one of two ways. You can just vote for the chair by giving your eyes, or if you want, you can do it by ballot, but you must put your name on the ballot of who you are and the person that you are elected. So with that in mind, just go ahead and start your deliberations as who you would like for the position of chair and who you'd like for the position of vice chair. Are Anyone? we allowed to stop? I'm sorry. sorry. Anyone interested in serving as chair? Jordan? Who else? I move member of Sandu Sandecki. Is that right? Uh, yeah. the uh, the chair. Like before before uh, anyone engages in discussion, please state your name for the record so the city clerk can your name. Greg to <laughs> <laughs> So a motion has been made to elect Jordan Sandecki for the position of the chair. Second. Chance Bonaventure. Second. Okay. Do we have a motion to approve? Any other, any other elections, rather? Any other names on the floor? For the I'll put my name in the hat as well. For the position of chair? Yes. Okay, so quite frankly, we have <laughs> two positions, two names for the uh, position of chair. Um, leave it up to the board if you want to just go ahead and I can ask. Maybe we should ask both of the comment, a comment from both. That's a good idea. Why you want to be chair? Larry, you want to take it? No, go ahead. 
Um, Member Sandecki, uh, currently I serve as the adult representative on the Northwest Youth Empowerment Council, teaching teenagers how to make motions and adopt uh, different um, volunteer opportunities using Robert's Rules of Order. I also sat on the board last year as a member. I felt that my uh, feedback that was given, the notes that I took and the questions that I asked were representative. More so, I feel like I'm um, being able to help move the board along, maintain points of order, follow recommendations from the council, and make sure that we make the best decisions possible is something that I would be uh, well suited for. So for all of those reasons, I feel being chair would be fun um, and be beneficial not only to the council, but also to the greater city of Las Vegas at large. I'm Larry Schultz, and I've been part of this board for four years now. This is the fourth year, and uh, last year I was chairman. And I also served on the City of Las Vegas Parks and Recreation Advisory Commission as the uh, co-chairman. And I also serve on the Clark County uh, Civilian Advisory Committee for the flood, Regional Flood Control District. And uh, I'm here to serve the city and to do the best job possible with the applicants and uh, make sure the best decisions are made in the spending of taxpayer money. And that's. All I have to say, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, for the position of chair, and actually as a matter of process, you have your choice. You can either vote from the floor, or you can do it by ballot. I'll just take guidance from the board as to what they would prefer to do. I'll do a show of hands. Okay, you can do a show of hands. Any other? Oh, I'm getting guidance from the board. Um, Go ahead. Uh, Member Toussaint, um, I think it's good. I mean, I think uh, several years ago I, no I nominated Larry, and uh, he's been a great uh, chair. I just think it's good to switch it around from time to time to give everybody an opportunity, which is uh, my reason for nominating uh, Member Sandy. Thank you. Okay, if there's not going to be any great comment, I'm going to take the, the first motion, which was a motion to elect Jordan Sandecki as the chair by a show of hands. All those in favor of electing Jordan Sandecki as the chair. Um, let's see. The other person that's running is Larry. That, were you just asking them? I see. It looks like we made a contract. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need it named, though. So. Member Holmes? Oh, no, it just, you know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, we're going to the other hand up No, okay. And, and then, okay. Harry, what did you do? What did you do? I didn't do the other option myself. Oh. Thanks. So, what are you? You're before Larry. Okay. And this is for what we're asking about Jordan. And oh, okay. That wants to. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. I just. Oh, go ahead. Okay. okay. I, I might be able to stay in the place. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the best thing for me to do. <laughs> <laughs> and this has it. That's what I'm getting. Okay. So that works. Okay. And. Wait, am I allowed to vote for myself? <laughs> <laughs> and by a show of hands, can we have uh, the vote for Larry, Larry Schultz, Astra? <coughs> and you could vote for yourself. Um, Three. Yeah. Come on, get it. Congratulations, Jordan. Do you need our hand? Do we get a coach here? Hey, AJ, did you vote? Yeah, obviously. No, just because I missed everything. Like I came in and I was downstairs swearing. Yeah. <laughs> We're the same boat. We're the same boat from the same ward. So late votes. We're looking chair and vice chair. And vice chair. Vice chair. And we're going to the option. They didn't know who the options were. Right. And so Jordan is going for chair and so is Larry. So there's the boat. Which are you want to vote for? I think we got enough for our. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's going to carry anyway. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think we have enough. I don't know which way to win, but. Okay. Yeah. 
well, you're present here, so we need your vote. So, I'm yeah, sorry, abstain. You don't have to, and you can't abstain no. because we've been. Okay, I'll vote for. Larry. 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 Okay, Larry. Larry. Thank you. Okay. So the next position is the position of vice chair who serves in the absence of the chair. Here. Here. I nominate Any? Chance Barbara I'd like to nominate Larry Schultz. I second it. Any, any other names? <laughs> By a show of hands, how many people want to vote for Larry as vice chair? Absolutely. Looks like it's your hands. You've got to vote for yourself. Larry. Vote for yourself. Get them all. That would be easier. I get a gavel. <laughs> Let the record show. Member Sandek, he got excited about getting a gavel. Congratulations! I'm right handed. I'm right handed. That's chance. Gives you a longer swing. Do I continue with the agenda or does that? Okay. Item number six: review of bylaws and responsibilities for the Neighborhood Partners Fund Board pertaining to the project selection process and agenda items. Alma. There was no changes in the bylaws. Everybody got a copy. Does everyone does everyone have a copy of the bylaws? Any further comment? Seeing none, we're going to move on to item number seven: review the neighborhood partners fund board program guidelines. I also have them here for everybody, but I also. Okay, so the guidelines are it, it's a five thousand dollar grant that we offer. I have a timeline in there that I so far somewhat kept with the timeline. Um, we, let's see, all, they're for registered neighborhood associations, HOAs, and business associations as well. And they are qualified to apply for this. Um, uh, neighborhood, where we, we want neighborhood improvement projects, crime and safe, public safety programs, neighborhood education, recreation, and cultural uh, initiatives. Um, $5,000 grant. It is a match grant. Um, types of projects that are not eligible is projects benefiting an individual or, or individual property only. Projects that do not benefit the majority of the neighborhood residents. Projects that supplement an exciting program or services already being provided by the City of Las Vegas. Direct that subsidize uh, existing services by the community associations direct subsidize of care for the medically in, indigent, <laughs> projects identified with political parties of any kind, projects proposed by for-profit associations, uh, associations that practice discrimination of any kind, uh, general contributions to capital campaigns, operating um, or retirements on, of debt, and uh, downwind programs. and. Uh, commercial housing or construction projects. Um, some of the neighborhood improvement projects can be landscaping projects, um, uh, can be uh, beautification projects, um, uh, tutorial programs, uh, block parties, anything to engage the community to have an engagement so that they are doing something with the community. Okay, it's not just for them, it should be for the community <coughs> engagement. So we want, what we want is to see the neighbor, the community engaged into the project so that they can feel a part of it as they're doing the project in the community. So those 
of the things that we're looking for. Um, there's a score sheet in there that we are, you guys are going to be scoring the, the projects as they present today and next week. And uh, let's see, some of the, the, the volunteer, we want to make sure that we concentrate on that. Are they going to meet the max? Are they going to match the grant with volunteer services? And the volunteer hours are valued at $24 per hour. So we, that's where we want the engagement of the community and stuff to kind of volunteer and doing the projects with them. And um, they can also use um, uh, uh, donations, um, professional services as part of the match. But you want to really concentrate in looking at these projects as you review these projects. We want to make sure that you really concentrate on will they meet the match, will they have community involvement. That's really important. You want to really get that back in the program. Okay. Any comment on the guidelines? Seeing none, we're going to move on to item number eight, report on the fiscal year 2018-2019 applications, summary worksheet, and rating sheet, evaluation criteria. Alma, would you I take I passed out those worksheets. Those are the description of the work of the project. They're all in there, and it's just description on the projects, how much they're uh, asking for. Uh -huh. That's a worksheet summary how much they're asking for, what their uh, the minimum will be if they don't get the full funding, and the amount that they're saying that they will be matching the grant. Any comments on the matrix? Seeing, go for it. Member Nero, um, I looked at uh, Zoom grants and I noticed an application for West Charleston and South Jones Neighborhood Business Improvement yes, Association. They, they don't qualify, so that's why I put on there they do not qualify. Okay. So you didn't have to really read them out. Okay. So they do not qualify. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. And neither does the Greens, is that right? The Greens also, they. Um, they have to withdraw their applications, so you won't be hearing from the Greens today. But I thought they were on the schedule. Um, they they were. Item number they nine, we're going to talk about the schedule next. Oh, sorry. You're good. Well, it's not really about the schedule, but it's fine. So that's number five. That's off the schedule. Yes. They okay. just sent me an email on HubUp a week ago, and I already had some email on that one, saying that they regret to withdraw, but right now the the association is not quite ready for this the type of project they were applying for. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Larry, Harry, member Williams. Member uh, Williams, I'm sorry, question for staff. Um, based on looking at the um, reports, there, there are some applications that for a certain amount and there's an application match that we, we have to have a match equal to what they asked for, correct? So there's several people who have um, asked for a certain amount and their match is half or less than what they requested. But there, then there's also a minimum request and some of them have met their minimum request but not their full request. So is that a question that we need to ask them or yes. is that a professional service that we're not seeing there or? Yes, I would, I, what I do is when I review the applications, I go back and try to give them another chance to try to finish, you know, add more to the application that's missing. And so um, I give them ideas as to maybe you, you forgot this, you forgot that, add this, add that. So, but this is what they didn't, you know, okay, this is so what you I just have. need to get more clarification so you, when guys, they do their Yes, you as okay. the board should ask them, how are you going to have the community engagement as part of this, are you going to get more volunteer hours into this because it is a match grant? Okay, that's good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Uh, Member Powell. This is just for myself. Um, there was some, some discussion last year about whether or not this fund is a startup fund, like for projects, but it's okay to do continuing projects. And so I guess I just need to clarify. Um, 
they have. So we're looking into the, the guidelines again, and we're going to look into the um, the the guidelines will eventually be changed for next year um, because we're trying to find uh, whether if it's a continuous project that they keep doing. There's only a few that are. I think I see that are continuing to do their project into a second phase and all that. Um, so that's something that, as the board right now, you can ask and, and say, but right now, because the guidelines really doesn't specify yet whether they can continue to do, or, you know, so we're working on that. I would have somebody working, helping me, <laughs> hopefully, to work on that. So there may be some changes in the future. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? And, and do understand that because they're <coughs> continuing, it's your choice to decide what you want to do. It's your choice. Okay. Member Tassan? Member Tassan. Um, I, I think that continuing repetitive program, like community events, you, know, you have a community event every year. It's a community event. That's what we're all about, right? Community activity. So I would think of continuing or repet repeating annual uh, event, for example, should be something we would support. Um, also, a lot of people don't have the money to do the whole project in one year. It may take several years for them, and a lot of our applicants have gone year after year, uh, continuing to improve their communities. So I'm not sure the problem with re repetitive or annual repeats, but that's just my two cents. Um, I, if I may respond to that, Member Cop. It's not a matter of, of it being a problem because I know that people have done projects in segments for years. But the question of clarity came up last year, so I didn't know if that was ever specified. Yeah. Um, I'm Chair Sandecki, I believe there's been discussion about having a later agenda item on one of our future agendas to be able to make recommendations or empower staff to be able to make guideline changes. And I feel like this discussion would be more appropriate there. Member Williams. Uh, Member Williams. And I've noticed going through the applications that like one had a uh, MPS grant say 10 years ago or five years ago and did the project or the thing that they did had either died away or the entrance is no longer, you know, uh, beautiful anymore. They need to go back in and redo it again. So I know there's sometimes that you might yeah. need to go because this plants died and vegetation died or wasn't kept up or whatever where you need to go back. So I know it, it, it was a suggestion that we had this conversation a little later, but I think um, it might be something to, to look at. But there is a lot of reasons to go back um, and, and reinvest. And again, we can ask the applicants what the spirit of the project is for and make determinations based on the answers that were given by the applicants. And, and as well as the uh, long-term stability of that or sustainability of the project. Any further comments or questions? Seeing none, we're going to move on to item number nine, discussing a uh, discussion for possible action regarding the neighborhood leaders' presentation schedule for June 5th today and June 12th next week. Alma. Um, so far, the schedule is the same except for um, the reason with um, all the applications and the schedule for the week. I haven't heard of anybody else withdrawing their application, so the schedule still is the same that everybody has. Does anybody not have a schedule? I have it right here. I give everybody a schedule. Any comments or questions regarding the schedule? Member Schultz. Yeah, I have a question. It's, it's really the schedule and, and just the format. So I've noted that some of the applicants have left things out of their submission. Like one of them left out the project budget worksheet, which is a critical element of that. So should we bring that up during the presentation, or should we just wait till the end, or what? Um, I believe staff has comment. On that one, I think you're talking about Cedar Neighborhood yeah. Association. That was, um, I have it, uh, one of the VISTAs was helping them with that application. She actually doesn't use that. And she's not here, so I can not get her to put back in. So that's... Yeah, and unfortunately, it's not their fault. Unfortunately, the backup they provide doesn't even add up to anything. So it's it's sort of, to me, and that's just an example, but there's a yeah. few others where I would say the links 
don't build the chain. So my question is, should that be brought up with the applicant here, or should that be held in advance? Assistant City Attorney, any recommendations? Because I'm... I'm relying on staff okay. to yes. I collected the information, and all the information was due by a certain amount of time, so... I do have a copy, and I, my apologies, because I, I just saw that this morning when I went to review, make sure, double-check my numbers, make sure I got them all right and all that. I realized that it wasn't there anymore, but I do have a copy of it. I will email it to you if you like. It's their pre uh, work sheet. But so, um, I'm a, that's just an example. I'm talking about in general, if we have deficiency, should the deficiency be identified during the presentations, or should they be held in advance? Yes. yes. Ask them. No, you should ask them, and if staff's able to answer, I'm sure staff will step in and say that was a clerical error. I had a few or, call me and tell me there were some changes. I said, you bring them in. Make copies, make sure that all the board members have it in case they ask you, and then you pass it around. So they see that you did make those changes. So, so just another follow-up, Chairman. So in some of the forms, the, you know, when you look at the mathematics of it, the numbers don't add up. And some of them are just minor addition type things, but some are really like, wow, you know, what happened there? It, and there's just a few like that. No, I understand that. Um, but based on the volume of applications that we've received, I would say that questions like that would be best directed to whomever they empower to fill out their application. Um, should they be able to answer those questions? Obviously, we're going to have to have that on record to be able to take into account whether or not that was an accounting error on their application behalf or whether or not. But again, we're on presentation schedule, so those are housekeeping guidelines. Yes, Member Tucson. A uh, question for Alma. Um, the, <laughs> uh, the, you mentioned that some information was just lost. Was it lost by the applicant or lost here? No, I'm sorry. Um, the, our VISTA was helping them with their application because there's a language barrier. They don't speak very good English. So she was helping them you know, with the application. Um, she has met with them. It's a new neighborhood association. So she's helping them to get up and going and stuff. So she, when she went in there to enter to help them upload, because mm -hmm. they didn't know how to do that, she accidentally deleted that because I have a copy of the worksheet, but when I went back in there to check it, it wasn't there. So in that respect, it's not going to be out this fall. Right. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So if you guys want, when they do the presentation, and you know, we give them five minutes to present and five minutes to um, for questions. If you take a little few more minutes, that's okay. You ask the questions that you feel you will need answers for your decision. Okay. Sound good. Okay. Takes a little bit longer. We've got all night. No <laughs> <laughs> all right. Any other comments or questions regarding the presentation schedule for June fifth or June twelfth? Seeing none, I'd like to move on to report by Neighborhood Partners Fund Board Grant Program Applications um, that have been submitted. Read the whole item. By the 18B, the Las Vegas Arts District, La Mancha of Summerlin, Rancho Manor Neighborhood Association, West Woodland Hills Twin Lakes Community Group, the Greens Homeowners Association, Smoke Ranch Pines Homeowners Association, Rancho Bel Air POA, El Camino Community Association, Rainbow Family Park Neighborhood Association, Spanish Oaks Homeowners Association, Desert Shores Community Association, First Twin Lakes Neighborhood Association, and Cedar Neighborhood Association. Seeing it is now two thirty-five. Go for Don't it. Don't we need to amend this item to yeah. say that the Greens Homeowners yeah. Association is not being heard today? Not, no. You will be reading the item as they come along. Oh, okay. And then when we get to that item, we will notate for the record that the okay. is not here. You okay. can't amend the, this okay. the item once it's out. Okay. okay, so I'm going to go check on the first group. You guys ready? Yes. Yep. Okay. Since we're on item number 10 and number two slots, brought up a good point. If any member has a conflict of interest on any of these neighborhood associations, when you get to that item, please state it for the record and the reason why you have a conflict and that you would either be disclosing or abstaining from the item. Disclosing your, your uh, whatever needs to be disclosed or 
if it indeed needs to be an abstention for the record. And if it's an abstention, you, will, you should not participate in any of the questioning or any of the deliberations when it gets to the award deliberations. City Attorney, it's Chair Sandecki. Um, would it be appropriate to ask a member that must abstain from an item entirely to leave the room during the discussion? It would, it would be Terry Pontella. It would be entirely appropriate. If you... As a chair, if you, I would appreciate if you do have to abstain so that we're not watching facial expressions while a presentation is going on, that if you have to abstain from an item to leave the room, there's a really nice break room right next door. Because reading someone's facial expressions can oftentimes, that's not something that we can communicate via audio. So if there's any reason that you have to fully abstain, not just disclose, there's a really nice break room. We'll come get you when the item's finished. Trying to make sure there aren't any potential outbursts. <laughs> yes, Member Williams? Okay. <laughs> you from that whole little. I think everybody's face No, 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 no. I, remember, I believe I remember last year there was a member on the board who had to abstain from an item, stayed in the room, and it was very obvious that she may have had some problems. Hello. Hi there. Good afternoon. Do you have a presentation or um, electronic or otherwise? Um, we do. Hello, everyone. I'm Derek Schoenbarger. Hello. Arts District Board President, Ms. Becky Miller. She's also on the board with me. Hello. Um, from our marketing committees, as well as other, many other things. So, um, I'll start talking even before we get this up, so we don't delay. Um, we, uh, the Arts District, located just down the street here, um, for our 2019 grant proposal, we are hoping to help the Neighborhood Fund, uh, Partners Fund, help us get a, a float. A float that can be used in, um, our long-term goal is to build a float to represent the 18B Las Vegas Arts District in Las Vegas parades, as well as other events. You know, maybe at First Friday or Third Friday. Uh, anything happening in the area, we'd like to be able to set up this, um, this float just to kind of show off how cool the Arts District is. So uh, in terms of community involvement with this project, we feel um, that the, it'll be Arts District sponsored and built. It'll have donated materials and time from artists and business. I think that's the nice flag. Got a view. And, um, right, one more community involvement. And uh, it's gonna be uh, Arts District representative in the city. Uh, of Las Vegas parades. Now, with the next slide, we will be fulfilling a need in our community by bringing together Las Vegas Arts District neighborhood uh, community businesses in a long-term collaborative effort to utilize, um, basically to build this, this float together. And I'll tell you, it's, it's a really cool float idea that we have. It'll be interchanging every year. So, um, and it, it, along with filling this other need, we'll be building greater brand awareness for the Arts District. So if you look at the cost analysis of why we're asking for the full $5,000 grant, um, one thing that we will be getting is donated tow vehicles. We've got uh, between a business that I have and one of our neighboring businesses in the arts system, we have two mid-century Cadillacs. One of them is a 1957 that's been completely restored. One of them is a 1962 Cadillac, which is mine, which is more of like a rat rod. But either one of these will be towing the vehicle. Those will be donated to any parade that we get involved in. And all of the... Um, Ball, can you come back one slide for me, please? All of the volunteer uh, labor will be, okay, then you don't need to. We'll move right on. And so this, this shows you what we're really asking the money for. Sorry, now, now back to where we were. We're looking, with the $5,000, we'll be able to buy a trailer. We'll be able to put two vehicle hitches onto these two Cadillacs, which can tow the, the vehicles. One more slide forward. And um, we'll also build a permanent ATB lit logo design. If you guys know that, that logo that costs hundreds of thousands of dollars over there, it's so beautiful, it's so fabulous. With our artists and with volunteer time, we're gonna be able to create something like that, a little bit smaller on the back of the parade float, like that, for within this $5,000 range. And we're also going, can you come back for me one more slide? Sure. 
we're also going to be buying the battery power system for the lights. So this is what we get for a permanent float that then in exchange each year can potentially change its theme. So for example, this year, this is what we asked to be buying with the $5,000, then all the artists in the area would be contributing together to build that year's theme float with all this stuff happening. Now we can go forward to see the construction. Um, this would be the initial phase, next stage for action. This is where it would literally go um, into the next step. The next slide, you can see this is an example of one of the cars that we just took off the internet, but this is what ours look like. And alas, this is just an example of how the lights could look on the sleep float from Japan, but you know, we're gonna do something really cool and creative, and every year the theme can change, or maybe every two years, around these pieces that are permanent that you guys would be sponsoring. So for example, this year we would do the Main Street one-way couplet. So it would start on one side of the float from City Hall all the way down the stratosphere, and you can imagine this float that is so cool to look at that can change two years from now. So. Thank you very much. Anything else? Oh, and how our, uh, we've already shown that we could have a lot of really great community involvement. We did a mural project where we received a grant. Yes. Sorry, may you introduce yourself for the record? I'm Becky Miller. And could you step in front of the microphone? Here? Yeah, we need to need you a little bit closer. Thank you. I'm on the Arts District Board, and I helped out with a grant to change some of the graffiti laying walls into some beautiful, huge scale murals. We teamed up local artists with local businesses. This is something that hadn't been done. And now we have a database of local artists and a database of local businesses. And just yesterday, I was able to match two of them up. Some funds had come available. And they were like, Yahoo, running off and running. Um, this is what we are able to do with our community. And we were very, very surprised at the number of artists and the number of local businesses that came on out and said, we want to do this with you and they donated time and money. Here's an example, completely funded. This is an 80-foot wall. It had a ton of graffiti on it, got painted white, and these are four 20-foot murals. The last fourth one is uh, out for negotiation right now with the artist. And she shows you what our neighbors did once they saw what, what our idea was to involve the community. And we feel that this would, that our float will get the same kind of awesome community involvement as well. So thank you very much. Again, we want to thank you for the funds last year, which helped us do uh, do these murals. And um, if you have any questions about um, our proposal for a float, yes. Um, in town, where would you store it? Um, we we have a we, we we would be able to find a place to donate it. We have a couple properties. Um, it, 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 or you know, the arts district is big. We have a lot of businesses that are uh, already contributing. Um, help for our artists and things like that. So we, we, we have some connections of empty lots and secure facilities. Yeah. Uh, Larry Schultz, Ward 6. So um, on your submission of your project budget worksheet, mm -hmm. for labor, you state 20 hours, but then in your detail backup, you state 200 hours. You only dollarize 20 hours. So the difference there is between $480 versus $4,800. I think your intent is to dollarize before and make it 4800 bucks. I assume you have 200 hours. Um, correct? I'm sure that we'll have more than 200 hours. Well, I'm talking about what your submission was based on. Yeah, so. Strictly um, based on your submission. Do you think that first 20 hours is a typo? Yeah, that's what I'm asking. Yes. Oh, wait, one is design. Well, see, this is your tally. Your tally is 200 hours, which is dollarized at $4,800, and this is $480. Okay, and at $480, we're at a grand total of $7,780. What I'm, what I'm asking you is, which is correct? Is the backup correct, or is the summary correct? Um, I need to look at... Um, okay. Well. I guess, it's been a moment I guess to we may suggest for the board that we ask the applicant to reconcile that difference and, and if, if indeed the submission is incorrect, to resubmit the form. Oh, I would have no problem doing that. Is, is that acceptable? Uh, I see no problem with it if you'd be able to provide it to staff um, yeah. directly so that we don't have revisions being with issues being uploaded. Um, Alma, do you have a card that you'd be able to provide him? Uh, yes. They okay. Have money. Perfect. So if you send it to Alma, yes, and then she'll be happy to. Thank you. Thank you, and thank you for noticing that. Member Schultz, does that answer your question? Yes, it does. Thank Fantastic. you. You're welcome. Any other questions? 
Thank you very much. Stephen, um, may I ask if you could leave the graffiti pictures that you were showing us for the record? Since they can't see that, since they were only hearing us ooh and awe at them. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, wait, I apologize. Member oh, Tucson has a question. Um, That's cool. We have a lot of applicants, and we have a budget, obviously, just to meet. And uh, if we can't award you the full five thousand, uh, can you still do the project? Yeah, absolutely. We'd be happy with anything that, that you know we understand. Uh, we're, we're we're very confident people, and we want to do this project regardless. So. Great, thank you. Thank you. Members Walter and Powell. Sorry. Sorry, the recording doesn't stop. Oh, sorry. So they're gonna okay. You're welcome. Sorry. Received 
um, grants in previous years, and I have just a couple of little pictures here, and just we just spend the money. Um, this is the uh, we had a gate opener that was failing that was replaced in that year, and then we had the next year we did new street signs and new neighborhood block signs and new development. And then the following year, we had some improvement to our landscaping in the park. So we appreciate that very much. Um, this year, we are requesting assistance to paint the garage doors in our community. Although the exterior walls and roofs and common area landscaping are handled by the HOA, maintenance of doors, windows, and garage doors for each unit are the responsibility of the individual homeowners. So over time, replacement doors, sun fading, weather uh, have changed the door colors so that they're inconsistent. Now, the pictures that I took with my phone look pretty good until I printed them, and it, it's not quite as distinctive, but you can tell that each of these houses, they're it's different colors. The doors are different colors. Um, we're also proposing to remove the neighborhood watch stickers from these doors and replace them with fresh stickers. This is what most of the ones look like today, and this is what we want them to look like coming up. That's a donation from Metro. The condition of the doors and these 10-year-old stickers do not promote the appearance of an engaged and committed community. This is needed to let outsiders know that we care about our property and we are looking out for each other. We have obtained quotes from local companies who specialize in this kind of painting work, and the best price is approximately $135 per door. The company comes well recommended, and our HOA management company has had a positive experience with them. We have reached out to our community and have received offers of volunteer hours from over 38% of the residents. As a result of a community potluck and a presentation that we did in April, we also have letters of permission to do this work, if it does happen, from 18 of the homes. These are needed as the project involves um, private property. And we are continuing to gather the remaining needed permission letters. Volunteers will be working on washing the doors, washing the windows in the doors, replacing the stickers. We'll also then have a hopefully a celebration community gathering at the completion of the project. And in support of this previous project, we had invited Metro representatives to support Neighborhood Watch to speak. And we were hoping that they will be able to come back and, and give us another presentation. They were very well received the first time. Our development borders on Pueblo Park. And although this is a great benefit for our residents, it can also be making us vulnerable to those who would use that park as a pathway for mischief. And so a strong neighborhood watch program can help keep us safe and watching out for each other. We feel that this project is consistent with the grant's mandate for beautification, safety, and community engagement, and would ask for the city's support. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Do we have any questions from the board? Member Williams. Yes, I notified the application that you guys have requested five thousand dollars. Yes. And there's required it's a matching grant which requires the same amount of match. Um, and based on what I see here, there's you asked for five thousand, you have a match of two thousand two hundred and fifty. So I think I believe it does need to be a equal or greater part of that. You guys have a plan to uh, match Well, um, we were hoping to be able to do that with volunteer hours. And uh, if we are not able to, if that does not come up to the match, then we will have to ask for individual homeowners to support it because it's not an HO, it's not a HOA thing. And I do not know whether we will be able to accomplish that or not. Because I, I just think I let you play the underestimating um, your community match. If you have that many people coming out, um, Yes. The dollar amount should be for each individual person, which I believe would be more than the $5,000. Well, you know, actually, at. Alma did point out to me that we were coming up short on that, and I had gone back and talked to some more folks and added some more hours, but I don't know whether I did right on the Zoom grant, which sometimes um, puzzles me a little. 
so I don't know if I got all of the information in there, but I thought we had reached, a, you know, an e equal amount of hours. They are currently looking at their application, so if it was uploaded, it would be in there. Okay, it's, it's current. All right, well, then I must just do that along the way. Member Nerero, do we require a full match, or do we just require a, a match? Full match, well, it's full match, dollar for dollar. Right, it's not. It doesn't have to be matched with cash. It can be matched with volunteer hours <laughs> or donations. Yeah, right. Okay. And so that's why I think. I mean, if you're looking at it, knowing that there's a lot of volunteers, um, yeah. if you get 20 people to do 20 hours, I mean that's a huge amount right there. So right. If, 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 even if there's 17 people and they did 200 hours, that's still a lot of hours. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. 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 Error in not properly uploading or downloading the document that I had that showed that. You know. Well, one requirement from the other grant is that we have that match, or if you could get with no, because yeah. you can't award no more than what you match. So I, I would definitely I uh, make that. sure that you communicate okay. that with staff if that's okay. Um, uh, yeah, that's good. Sure. Good. Right. So, yeah, if. Um, for the recommendation, then, if there's updating um, to it, anything be sent directly to Alma, as she'll disperse to the rest of the board. Okay, I can do that. Perfect. Thank you, Member Kirk. Member Kirk, um, do you was there any type of warranty? You mentioned the company was doing at a certain fee. Do they offer a warranty for their? Uh, yeah, they had. I think it was two years, which does not sound a huge amount, but I believe it was a two-year warranty. Yeah. I don't know how long paint warranties normally last. Two years. Mm -hmm. Member Nerer, did you have a question? Yeah. I'm good, thank you. Go for it. Uh, Member Qualey. I just was curious, on you, you were saying how it's the, it's the homeowner's responsibility for the doors and the windows and so forth. Yes. Just how many homeowners are maintain, currently maintaining their garage door? Just. Uh, I know of two that have recently painted their doors. But that was because the house went up for sale. <laughs> so you feel confident that you'll get all 44 that I, I It may not be all 44 um, because I don't have a permission letter from everyone. And I'm guessing that someone who just had their door painted, it probably doesn't need to be done again. But it probably will be close to that. I just, I can tell you there are 44 homes and that most of the doors need to be painted. But there may be a, a couple that don't. Mm -hmm. Based on that, going back to Member Williams' comment that if there are less doors that need to be painted, would that then adjust the, the amount that you would need to then be able to I, match? I believe so, yes, it would. Okay. I, but again, it's, it's hard to, until we know for sure what the, you know, and go to each person and say, okay, are we going to do it or not do it? And then we'd be able to say, okay, this is exactly what we need. And it could be 5000 or it could be 4950 or something. I don't know. You know. But we wouldn't ask for more than we used, I guess, is the appropriate. And hopefully, if although we've had issues with vendors in the past, but oops. That's the end of the five-minute question period. Got it. Thank you. Are there any, um, would you like to finish your statement? And then we'll. I was just going to say that um, if the vendor is a city vendor, then the invoice goes straight through the city, which is, I think, what the preferred method is, because then you don't pay um, the tax, as opposed to us paying it yes, and presenting a, an invoice later. Is licensed and registered the city. Right, yes. And then we don't pay tax enough. Right. I take care of all that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Member, Member Kirk. Kirk. So is this application based off of all 44 or 42, or, or was it only the ones we did, that it was based on 44, yes it was. Okay. And it's actually um, $5,200 for the 44, yes. Uh, Member Walters, can I ask one more Go question? Go for it. Okay. So your neighborhood watch stickers. Yes. Where are those? In your windows? In the windows of the garage. Right here. Okay. I know it's tiny, I know, but. Right. Does the uh, association not allow us the signs, the neighborhood watch? We have that also. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In fact, um, this, I know you can't see this picture very well. No, I do. I can Yeah, see. this is uh, when we did 
replaced the street signs a couple of years ago. We also replaced all of the you know, parking signs and neighborhood watch signs and things that were damaged or sun bleached or whatever. So, Because the, the signs I find as being my neighborhood, but Captain, are more effective than the stickers. Yeah, ones. we had one on the, uh, the gate that leads into Pueblo Park and it had faded to like gray and white. And then it got tagged. <laughs> oh my God! How you know so how that, it doesn't exactly give you confidence that nobody's going to pay anybody's going to pay attention to those signs. But we did get a replace. So, okay. yeah. Thank you very much for your time. You're welcome. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Are we ready for the next one? Can I ask a question? Where were, where's the total? I thought there was a total somewhere of total we were requested and total we have to give. Um, suggested now that the green is I believe we have the pictures that you passed along. Yeah, it should be fine for the record. Thank you, Susan. Sorry. What were the applications you need? Yeah, but now that the greens have withdrawn. Oh, that's right. So it's going to be so. Like, that that's 5000 less, right? I believe, yeah, we'll save this till after presentation. So we're currently still in presentation. Is it related to the current presentations and the state of the presentations? It's related to the current process of, I think it throws people off when you can kind of buzz and buzz and maybe we can give kind of a, our chair at the end. Yeah. 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 If you could stand at the end of the table near the, there's a flat microphone. <laughs> And introduce yourself for the record. If you do decide to stand up from the side, um, please get up to the table and introduce yourself for the record at the table. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Good I brought printed copies if anybody would like one. Sure. Old fashioned, take one, pass it down. So are we going to answer Member Williams' question about timekeeping before we start this presentation? Or no? Okay. Thank you. Is it ten, it's ten minutes? Is that what it is? Well, five minutes for your presentation. Perfect. Brevity. I like it. Thank you. <laughs> and then before you start, if you could introduce yourself for the record and, and your application. Thank you. Ready to start? Um, my name is Tara Anderson. I'm a resident at uh, Rancho Manor. We're the community tucked over just south of the 95, west of 15, and north of Alta. Um, we were here last year. Our application this year, um, our request is essentially a continuation of the broader vision for our entryway at Rancho Manor. So um, we have a very engaged neighborhood. We just finished another continuation of um, uh, probably about a mi another mile worth of community wall, thanks to Harry and our, our newly formed relationship with our newest council member. So we're very, very active. This project is um, really just to kind of help spruce up community pride. The primary focus, for the sake of time, um, I'd like to tell you to just, well, since they have a copy, if you could just scroll to the third slide with the um, entryway. So the primary focus of uh, this application is that we are in the process of building two monument signs at the entrance of Rancho, um, off of Rancho and Redondo, which is just north of Alta. That's the primary entrance to our neighborhood. 
The last grant application that we received from you all, we used those monies to source materials. The erection of one of these walls is under, this monument sign is underway. Um, it will emulate the two other signs that we have in the neighborhood that were part of a public works project off of Mesquite and Shadow Lane. They're six foot by 10 foot walls, block wall with a veneer, stack stone um, look to them. So we wanted, our whole goal is to decorate the entrance of our neighborhood so that there's a presence. Um, and so, but due to the cost and size and scope of the project, we need to keep applying to keep getting more money to finish and see it out. So right now, one of the walls, which you'll see, this is an existing wall um, off of Mesquite. We have two of them. We also have one off of Shadow. We used our last money um, to repair. Some of the lettering had been damaged. Um, so we're chipping away at it. The goal being that um, the newest walls are going to literally look just like this, a little bit lighter in color. Legibility is really important, but they are six feet high, 10 feet wide. Then these monies that we're asking for for this batch of $5,000 will allow us to have the second wall erected and pay for the labor to be able to do so. Um, Alma has been amazing helping us work with city right-of-way issues because that's where the signs are actually located, not on private property. Um, and then also the iron work that will read Rancho Manor at our entrance on both of those walls. These $5,000 that we're asking for this year will go towards the decorative iron work. Um, and then also, we there are uh, the city has done such a great job throughout other like communities with different sculptures, like the desert sculpture, the metal sculptures. We'd like to use um, any monies over and above that are available post the design of the ironwork to be able to also put some peripheral sculptures around our signs um, because water is not available. So we can't keep plants. Um, we hit an irrigation challenge. They won't let us dig through Rancho Road to get water. It seems unreasonable to me. Mm -hmm. But um, so these sculptures are sort of in lieu of an opportunity for us to have a more lush landscaped look at the entrance off of Rancho. So essentially we would like every bit of $5,000 and then then some of these to go our way towards um, finishing our signage and then decorating them around the Questions? Member Schultz? Yes. Thanks for your very good presentation. So I do have a, a few questions. Sure. So this is your project budget worksheet, and your project budget worksheet uh, shows in the <coughs> neighborhood match of $5,000. However, when you go to the backup of what you submitted, you have one backup which shows uh, that you have 105 in-kind hours which would be valued at $2,520. However, it's not listed on the sheet, and you have a total of $5,000 here, and you have another submission called your donation pledge letter, and from looking at the pledge letter that you submitted, it almost looks like it's blank. So here's the challenge, the unique uh, reality of this project is that the grant monies that are awarded to us require matching funds to volunteer hours. But Physically, due to building code, city right of way, liability requirements, although we had intended to erect the signs physically ourselves, being code compliant, I could have pulled the permit, etc., that's actually not allowed. And so, what we're able to do is, if it's acceptable to all of you, is like our wall painting projects, other things that we're doing around the neighborhood, where we can show that we're volunteering our hours, we're committed to beautification. However, the actual municipal processes that govern right-of-way won't allow us for the erecting of these specific walls and or the installation of the ironwork for our community members to do it. So we have to find, we're pursuing other neighborhood projects where we can offer the labor, but this requires us to pay a licensed contractor to do it. So let, let me follow up on that, if I may. So what is the correlation then, the direct correlation between these other projects and the project for which you're requesting funding? Well, they're all under the same umbrella of beautification, right? So our neighborhood, what we're really trying very hard to do is to not have to go and dip into the pockets of our neighbors. And so we're involved, we've taken the goals, we've, um, the ideation of what we want our projects to look like. Um, we've got our community members are engaged. We all 
we have to source materials, we have to deal with logistics, we have to face the city, like there's a lot of moving parts to it. So we're active, it's just we can't physically erect this wall with volunteer hours. But like Harry was out there, we had probably 15 to 20 community members just this past weekend to paint walls and what have you. So it's all, it's all continuous and contiguous throughout our neighborhood. This will just allow us to add signage that is the only entrance to our neighborhood that currently lacks any signage, and it's off of our major thoroughfare, which is Rancho. Thank Member you. Nerero. Member Nerero, um, I so how many signs total are there? There's currently if you receive this and you're successful in putting them up, how many would there be total? This will allow us to finish two that come as a function of the last five thousand dollars we gotcha. awarded and this five thousand dollars. Gotcha. Thank you. Number one, go ahead. Yes, and, um, and maybe this might be a suggestion or something that you can add to the grant for um, staff is to make it a holistic project and add in a full beautification scope, which would include the walls, the, the everything else, because as you said, it is a um, master project that you've been working on with all the sculptures, all the other things. So um, in terms of how to get the volunteer hours, um, that would be something, I don't know if that's something that you can add to the, to the project because it is a um, well beautification project. It's a master plan beautification project. Well, the challenge is being that the painting part of it you can do through volunteer hours, right? And, um, but this costs money, but we can't volunteer to do to build the wall. But a right? lot of applicants do their projects, not just the signage, they do like neighborhood beautification and then they add the hours to a general beautification and then the two signs are separate. I think is what, right. If we could do that, I'm happy to amend that and articulate all of what we've done and or are doing that will kind of marry them and then you guys can all see that we do have the, the matching of volunteer hours. I'm happy to do that. Okay. So it would be, sorry, go ahead, Member Walters. Um, you can also ask the contractors who you are having have doing the signs and whatnot uh, for some sort of donation as oh. well. Oh, I've asked. To <laughs> I am short of gravel. So here's what's happened. I have literally called 17 masons to help me erect two walls. And due to the, the rate of growth, the demand for construction costs, the, I mean, they're pretty much dedicated to um, home builder work. I mean, it's just... It's not that they're not wanting to help, they just, everyone's scarce. So the company that has agreed to do it, that's involved, is literally doing it as a, a relationship of a relationship of a relationship, sort of keep, like groveling. Um, so it's, it, there's, it's just a scarcity of, of people, and it's such a small project. So the other side of it is they're like, well, if we're gonna take crews over there, plus the liability because it's on Rancho, do we wanna, take a hit on margin. I mean, it's just a, it is not for lack of, of exploring creative options to get somebody to do it. Can I respond? For yeah. free. Um, no, I'm not asked, I, I was not suggesting that. I'm just saying sometimes when you do get contractors for these projects, you can ask them for a discount. Yeah. Yeah. Cry. yeah. <laughs> Cry. And yeah. then you can advertise them like crazy on your neighborhood Facebook page, you know, and, and I think it's fundamentally, honestly, a supply and demand problem due to right. the, just demand and the pressure for construction labor, to be honest with you. That's what has been shared with me. So, Never cut on it. Um, I was prepared to build it myself if they would have a construction bond for, you know, to do it. So it would have been code compliant and everything. But, uh, Never cut on it. I, um, where does this project fit into your master plan? If awarded the funds, we're ready to go. We have we have the balance of the materials. We have a gentleman who's doing some mock-ups of the ironwork for us that we'll be able to present to our board members next week to vote as a neighborhood and have continued discussion. So in lieu of the heat, I think conservatively, and it's fair to say that it could all be done by October. Is this the final phase or is this? No, uh, it's just our next idea. So I don't know, we gotta come up with the next the next thing of what's available, what's realistic, and what we really wanted to do something landscaping focused, but irrigation being limited. Right. So, so we'll be back next year. Member Schultz. So, just to, to summarize, when I think we're out of time, is a suggestion was made by the team members here 
that you might reformat your project because the way it's formatted right now, in all sincerity, it's not in compliance with the terms of how your other people the matching work. of yeah, it's just mm -hmm. the way people are coming at it. But if you can reformat, restructure, amplify so you can meet those requirements by embellishing some of these other activities, the only thing is. This is a time-sensitive activity, so we would probably need to have that from your team probably within 48 hours. Totally doable. Okay. Maybe Member Bonaventure. Um, sorry, one too many. Um, Member Bonaventure had a question. Then we'll go to Member. I'm sorry, I can't pronounce your name. Quayley. and then we'll hear from the staff. You mentioned that two signs weren't finished from the last grant that you received. So one of the signs we used, we used part of the $5,000 awarded to repair. So it said it originally read Rancho Manor. So the Rancho had been stolen, damaged, what have you. So part of the fifteen hundred dollars of those monies went to the ironwork company for that sign to be repaired. Oh, so they're finished now. Those two signs. There's two existing signs in the community. One of which we repaired. The two that we're building. One is underway. The other one we don't have the money to do. Okay. Member Quayley? I just wanted to, to verify on that too that will, uh, the budget worksheet will be redone to, to match Absolutely. that. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm just, just email me that. So, so thank you. Get back to me. Okay. Based on the conversations at the table, the board is okay with receiving a revision of this application to include other neighborhood beautification projects for this, which will be delivered to staff. Yes. I'm getting a general feeling of I, therefore. <laughs> yes, getting a lot of hand raising. <laughs> Please send your revisions to Alma as soon as you're capable. Well, Thank you so much. Thank I have extra presentations back for you. 48 hour do over. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. 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 If I could have everyone silence their mobile devices, please, and Member Schultz, if you could put that timer on vibrate, I would appreciate it. I don't know how to do that. You want to show me? I tried I tried to remember <laughs> yourself is it about the presentations yeah um, I'm, I'm a little concerned that we have we're revising everybody's projects here uh, which is not something we've typically done in the past so you know I'm, we might have occasionally made a suggestion but who are we doing their projects for and their applications for them? It's got to, it feels, it feels funny to me that people aren't applying correctly and we're fixing them, helping fix them. Um, I don't know. Just uh, maybe I'm the only guy that feels that way. Never quite. I just I, I, I understand that feeling. My thing is that most of them are it's. it's it's a addition or, or incorrect on the on the, the worksheet in most cases. This one was a little bit different, I think, but they have a unique situation because of they're not being able to do any of the labor. So I think that's and that's the only one that I think is asked to rewrite what their project is. But mostly it's the it's the front, and I agree the budget worksheet is. Could accurate. you just turn it down? And. So if, if, it, if it was okay for them to change those, which we no, should allow, just turn so it down then. This is a stop mine says stop playing. That's fine if you could just turn it down for it so it's not as jarring it's, when it goes on. It's off. not silent here. That works. Okay. Okay. Just turn it down. Thank you. Yes, Williams? Okay. Um, and, and, and I here we go with your comment on that. And I just think that um, possibly folks don't know how to get to a, a certain level or where they want to get to. Um, I, I believe it's still in the context of a beautification project. I don't think it was went out of the scope of what they were trying to do, right. what they're trying to accomplish, um, and give them that opportunity to make their hope. Because I think a lot of people are underestimating and Jipping themselves out of how they match their funds, and they're not practically uh, assessing the twenty-four dollars per hour. Like this right here is volunteer; they can use this hour as someone to volunteer. I don't think anybody used presentation and all those kind of things as part of their match their grant. So I don't think most people, you know, when you look at these, these grants, really know how to um, 
to take a full advantage of all the monies that they are, are. And that not only is hurting them, but it's hurting the city of Las Vegas in terms of people matching all the time and effort they put in and what they match um, these funds for. So I understand where you're coming from, but I just still wanted to give everybody a little applause. Yes, ma'am. Um, and that's just what I want to say. Yeah, I agree with you. I understand what you're saying. My, my only point is that maybe this should be done elsewhere, not in this board meeting. And, and I agree with that. I think we put any during the... We can make recommendations to staff about how to handle issues like this going forward where right, it doesn't matter. There is NPF training. I believe there's an NPF training. There is. A lot of people <laughs> who have gone through this process over and over don't go to the training. And I think in the training process, we probably need to do a better job of explaining and defining those things. And that'll be a good suggestion for um, one of the items that we have that'll be added to a later agenda for recommendations about how to improve the project going forward. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for your comments. Hi. Good afternoon. That's not your presentation. Please don't look at it. If you could just stand at the end of the table for me, you're going to be near a microphone. I need you to introduce yourself and your um, community for the record. And then if you have a presentation, I believe Alma will be pulling it up for us. Thank you. Welcome. You're going to have five minutes for presentation, and then we'll go to a, to a five-minute um, question and answer, if that's okay. Okay. All right. Take your time, Alma. <laughs> it's Agastrano. Bottom left. No. This has a quick, um, a quick uh, update on this application. We have it under uh, Ward Three, and I believe um, it's a Ward Five. <laughs> it's Ward Five, not Ward. Is it incorrect here? Yeah, on this um, work sheet? West, yeah, West Ward and Hills, we like the Community Group, it's Ward Five, not Ward Three, as a mm -hmm. correction. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. I know what we're talking about. It says it's so I need to. Let me get out. Oh, I'm going We're plugged into our network. Just for a second. Um, is while we wait for it to load, is it possible for you to introduce yourself in your project and just of kind course. of walk us through it sure. while we? Hi, my name is Doug Graff. I'm the president of the West Woodland Hills Twin Lakes Community Group. Uh, very specific about the group, it's not an association. Don't want to get sued. Uh, a member of it, I would try to do that if I call it an association. So we change the name of the group. Um, we, this is the second, uh, second part of uh, a 
enrichment program that we're doing in, in the West Woodland Hills, Twin Lakes area. We're, if you know the city, we're just east of the golf course, basically to Pyramid. So with that little cove tucked in there. Um, so Woodbridge, Ironwood, and um, uh, Midlake are the north south streets. Um, last year we put up three cameras, um, we put up neighborhood watch signs and requested money last year and did receive that, thank you for that. Um, so we're back, we want to do more. Um, we had some pretty good results with the cameras, reducing the crime and keeping the rates if we looked at the, you know, the statistics, uh, depending on which ones you look at. Um, we had uh, no violent crimes in the neighborhood last year, which was great, and we're excited about that. Um, had some minor thefts and break-ins. Um, and but the cameras are doing I think what they're supposed to do and it's more of a deterrent right so we do have we man those ourselves and we if, if there is an issue we can climb up and and we have the keys and can take them take the covers off the trail cams pull out the SD cards and then, and then have that um, one of the problems in Twin Lakes which is the, the the western part of our group is that there's no street lights when that subdivision was built there are no street lights so we can't put cameras up because there's no street light poles to put them on so our proposal this year is to do that on private property with the permission of the owners um, to put up their own poles and then we'll put the cameras on them. We had a meeting back in February at the golf course and we asked people if they would volunteer to do that and um, no surprise, they said sure. And uh, we also, in that, that portion of Twin Lakes, without the street lights, they had carriage lights on the ends of their properties that, that line Ironwood, uh, Mid Lake, Golf and some of the other streets over there. So um, our proposal is to buy the 20-year LED lights. Um, they must have a working fixture to put it in. They must also volunteer to be on the neighborhood watch. And they must uh, also, part of the neighborhood watch um, volunteer program is that they go um, to a um, first Tuesday at Bolden. So we have a pretty good representation at first Tuesday. We've got a pretty good um, group of folks in the neighborhood that go. Um, and so we were really good involvement with the neighborhood watch. They're talking to each other. Uh, it's helped quite a bit to bring the community together, so much so that we also are will be having our first block party in September. We're really excited about that, but it's not in the proposal, just FYI. It's something that grew out of what we're um, doing and bringing the community together. We have a fair number of retirees in our community, paired with a fair number of um, new families, small children, uh, types of families, that's how I would describe it. So it's, it's neat to see kind of the, the passing of the, the guard in our neighborhood, if you will. Um, you know, the first subdivision built on a golf course in Las Vegas. Share that little tidbit for you with um, you. And it's, so it's, it's nice. And so it's, it's bringing the community together. Uh, we think, we believe that the stats would back up our submission or summarization or that will be, that it is the deterring the crime by putting the signs up, having the cameras, letting people know that we're watching. Um, I believe in it just um, by looking, the graffiti rates are down um, at that paired with the fact that we call and you come out and you clean and you hang over very quickly. Now our neighborhood watch groups are on that, get that reported and get that cleaned up as quick as we can to just keep that at bay. So we are back. We're fine. Um, and I, I can, I can tell you, tell you. That's fine. Okay. What we're asking for, uh, unless you'll see it and get it eventually. We all have copies of the application that you submitted. Oh, okay. Okay, so you all have that. Okay, so questions? Yes. I just want to thank you for when you have some people paying over it when the paper actually matches the wall. <laughs> I mean, that's just one of my things, you know. If you're going to paint over it, you know, it's peach. You know, we made it peach, you know. Yeah. It, it makes a big difference when I am coming through the neighborhood for it to look a certain way and to, it's like paint does a lot. Yeah. You know, and as you recognize, just in the downtown area with them upgrading things, it's nothing but paint, but it makes a huge yeah. difference. It does make a huge difference. So I really appreciate that. Member Schultz? Uh, yes, thank you very much, Chair. So, um, number one, I, I want to compliment your group on doing an excellent job of getting permission letters from the homeowners to support their willingness to do the project. 
Now, as it relates to the project budget worksheet, I think you need to redo this. Okay. Because there is a discrepancy between the backup you submitted and what this sheet says. This sheet for pledged hours shows 528 hours, but your backup detail that you submitted with all the people involved shows 588 hours. And then when you do the math, the math in both cases. Do we have too many volunteer hours? Oh, I'm not saying, I'm not, I don't know. You don't tell me that. But what I'm saying is you've reported 588 hours, but your summary sheet says 528 hours. Okay. So you've reported more in your detail. But then you didn't dollarize it correctly. In either case, it wasn't dollarized. So if you just do the math, the 588, assuming that's accurate, comes out to $14,112. Then you also have some professional service hours at $940. But when you tally it all together, you're showing a $18,000 total, including the $5,000 you're requesting, where the math really says it should be on $21,000. So what I would ask with the Chair's permission is that this be redone because it's not accurate right now as it is, but we need to probably get this back from you within 24 hours. So can you look at this and again compare it to what you submitted? Yeah, actually of course. Um, our neighborhood watch captain did the, the grant and he unfortunately had a work emergency this afternoon, so I apologize if he's not here, but yeah, I can get with you tonight. If you could just check if it's an accounting error as to, because I'm, I'm looking at the totals that were sent on the pledge sheet and it says that you have $12,000, um, $12,112 as your volunteer pledge sheet through those hours and it does say 588 on the pledge sheet. It's, it's just that on the neighborhood um, Total pledge through volunteer hours on the budget worksheet, we have 528. So if that's just a clerical error, if you could just check that and send yeah. that to Alma, we would appreciate it because we believe you sure. have her contact information. So just whether or not it should be updated to 512 for, to yeah. 588 or if it is the 528. May I have, uh, see if it would be possible to get a copy of what you're looking at? Or, or we, that's something we submitted? That's something that you submitted. Okay. Everything that we have you yeah. submitted. Okay. Yeah, so. everything I'm looking at was submitted okay. by your team. Perfect. Number one, sir. Okay, can I go now? We'll go back to that new actual project career a little bit oh. and, and find out. I got some pictures back then. Our section. So, um, from your cameras, yeah. um, how does it do uh, in terms of the crime? Who surveys? Who surveys it? Or nobody looks at it unless someone um, submits that there was a crime. And then, is it something that is? And I, and I look at the next picture. Yep. That's so then we, we climb the pole, we take the padlock off, and we pull the SD card, and then look to see if we can determine anything. We had an issue with a neighbor whose car got egg, um, and so we, we pulled it. Unfortunately, we weren't able to see uh, with the angle on that particular, because of, we only have three in a whole neighborhood, right? So it was difficult. And as a result, you've been working with Metro Thunder, that's going to Tuesday. And so this is something that you can present or give for, uh, to Metro Sure, for absolutely. And yeah. Kind of yeah. yeah. Yeah, so if you, if you want to flip through there, I can answer questions. This is last year's summary of what we did and, and where we went and the time that we spent to put up cameras and whatnot. Wow. Um, so that's last year's. So um, again, more designs. Um, some examples that the cameras uh, will go a lot more. It's a night and daytime. Um, this is where, uh, this is this gentleman who was an airport watch captain. That's his sister-in-law. She had just pulled her dog off of his lawn. And there's no plastic bag or anything. Uh, just saying. So, uh, uh, you can see that the cameras are able to zoom in and you can bring out, pull out the devices if you need to do that. Um, thank you. And this is just as an example of um, folks that we didn't know from the neighborhood. You know, what were they doing there? Someone had reported that there were people in the neighborhood that nobody knew and why were they there? And so we could pull this off and just give you an idea of the amount of detail that we could get. Should something bad have happened as a result? So of that, that. does this read up every 24 hours, or I mean, it's a amount of space? It's a amount, amount of space and and the sure. determination of how detailed we are. Um, this it was an example of a vehicle that comes to an neighborhood every 24 hours, trying to figure out, and it doesn't sit in the driveway at night, but it would be a, an instance or a case of somebody casing the neighborhood. Is that what's going on here? And this vehicle kept popping up and popping up. And this is just when we were doing the drive around testing to see the quality of the pictures to get the settings right. Because if you set it for uh, higher resolution, you don't get to save as many days worth of pictures. You know, it's the trade-off. So we were testing that out. 
This is an example of another night picture. This particular one uh, isn't so great here. Uh, this is an example of a little girl walking to school at 10.30 in the morning. And it was like, why is she out there at 10.30? What if she would have disappeared? This would have been an example of we could say, okay, she was here at 10.30. Um, but again, we only have three cameras. So our, our goal is to have more of those so that we can see potentially bad things, hopefully not, but if something bad does happen, we can track them through the neighborhood. Um, this is last year's. Yeah. Yep. Um, we are short on time, so final Thank questions you. from the board. I do have one um, regarding the requirement of neighbors that have the pole in their yard on private property. You mentioned that they're volunteering to do that. How do you plan on maintaining that community engagement should they sell the home? Uh, that's a good question. I, and the pole's there in cement. It's not right. only it's on their private property. I mean, I guess if the new owner would decide to pull it out, they could. Okay, but their participation is being part of the neighborhood watch is an agreement. Like, that's not, I don't believe, something you can enforce. Going forward, right. I mean, but it's just a sign. It's okay. not the camera. Um, it's the sign okay. of um, neighborhood watch helping people do the right thing. Ben Monero, thanks for dealing with our technical difficulties. You did a great job. That's okay. It, it, it happens. So, uh, get back with you all my Just on the, the clerical issue. issue. On the clerical issue. We could just issue. get that clarified. She'll send it out to the board. We really okay. appreciate it. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, in the interest of time, we are about 20 minutes behind, and I know we had one that withdrew that we should have heard at 310. If everyone's okay with it, we're just going to keep going through. Yep. Yes. Yes, please. <laughs> Sandecki, for the record, the Greens HOA chose to withdraw their application, so they will not be heard today. Stand at the end of the table for me. And um, there's a microphone at the end of the table that will need you to speak toward. It's flat. Yep, green light. So speak toward it. Introduce yourself for the record. Introduce the community that you're here for. You'll have five minutes to present, and then we'll have about five minutes for questions. So bear with us and feel free to get started whenever you're ready. I'm Donna K. Aloha. I'm with Smoke Ranch Pines HOA. I'm the secretary treasurer on the board. This is Anthony Evick, our president. Welcome. All right. Um, I've passed out some handouts. I just want you to make a mess. I got one more. I don't have any in color, and I apologize for that. I had some glitches. Um, we've been working on a beautification project now for three to five years. And we're a small HOA association with 41 units. Um, they're two bedroom, two bath. And most of it is homeowners living on the side. We do have a lot of um, rentals that have been moving in with the downturn of the properties and a lot of homes went into foreclosure. So now we have rentals. And over the past couple of years, we've come up with a lot of issues that we've had to take care of. And if you look where we, I have the multi-phase project, this outlines the bullets as to what we've worked on. We had to replace sewer lines due to our uh, pine trees. They grew too large. They grew into the sewer lines. That was part of the HOA um, duties to take care of. And so with that, we went on, we applied to the Southern Nevada Water Authority for the landscape rebate program, and we took out all our pine trees, and we took out the grass, and we went to zero state because of that. 
We also, because of the city, we had to take out our street bumps, so we redid our street and we redid the carport inside. Um, we painted the wrought iron at the entrance. All of our roofs in the last couple of years have been coming apart. So they've been blowing off and destroying in the high winds. So out of the 41 units, we've replaced all but seven. That's projected for next year in our budget. We've done painting and repairs of the fascia on every unit. We've done the front and back security doors and interest gates in the backyards we painted. We've had to upgrade our community pool area with pool decking resurfaced, the lights needed to be repaired. We needed a new emergency phone because it didn't meet the guidelines that we had to meet. New furniture, we changed the locks and new keys because we had trespassers on the property. And then all the street lighting was changed to LED lighting. So the final phase is where we're at today. Today we're at how are we going to impact the community. And if you look down, it's not very clear. The first photo is our wall, about 725 meters feet that faces Smoke Ranch. And it's, you can see it's in disrepair. The second picture is the street across Smoke Ranch. They had painted their walls two years ago. A lot of our wall is damaged to because we live in 89108 to tagging. So we've had to paint, 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 plus it's also falling apart. So that's where we're at right now, final phase. We spent over $100,000. We've asked our, all of our units for special assessments the last year of $200 additional dollars on their HOA monthly fees to help cover the cost, especially with the roofing. So primarily, we don't have the money to finish the last phase. That's why we're coming here today. Um, the team has been on board and we've worked with the HOA management company. Right now we have five residents that's been working alongside with us and we're also hoping that all the residents in the area, if we're granted the grant, the funding we're asking for, to do a, a cleanup of the whole unit. We are on a U shape, so we want everybody to come out, wash the windows, sweep the carports, go clean the community areas, weed. Um, and then have a celebration that afternoon in the community pool to get to know the renters that we have in there because we don't know our renters. Um, so the request we're asking for is $3,695 which is take care of um, the repair and the painting to the outside of the community which would just benefit the whole. Um, we have an elementary school down one unit next to us and a lot of our parents and children also walk down that side wall where we're at out in uh, Smoke Ranch High and we also have high school students and middle school students and a lot of kids walking down there. We just feel like it includes the whole area. It really didn't look like such an eyesore out there and match the street across from us and make those improvements. So, and I'm going to include some extra photos so you can see how we changed our landscaping. Um, this is the planting the planting we put in at once we removed all the trees and the landscaping and that's the street. Remember to um, so the wall that you guys are repairing doesn't even face into your community. It faces out. It faces out on the wow. street. So it's our wall. Right. And everything. But, but you won't even be looking at it. No. From inside of your community, correct? Right. Wow. Correct. Good for you. Yeah. We'd like to, we, oh, well, when we looked at community, we weren't just thinking about our community. We were thinking about the neighborhood mm -hmm. in general. And because 890108 is the area it is, we wanted to boost it up and you know show that we have pride for our neighborhood and everything and also so that it matches the street because the, the other community across the street painted theirs two years ago no one has tagged that we've been tagged quite frequently over numerous the times when the city comes out and they spray paint whatever color they have sir can i have you introduce yourself for the record could you introduce yourself for the record please anthony Amon. go ahead number williams number williams for the record um, two comments. Now, one, the wall that was painted across the street was it painted a solid color, and then the pillars were painted a separate color. No, just a solid color. It was just painted a solid. Yeah, color. further down the street, on the other across the street, down on the other side, it is painted like that. The pillars are one color, and then the inside is the other color. But we thought cheapest for us would go. And, and that that was a project that the city did for different communities, and so maybe you might have you guys do a project. We can look at trying to match the whole project with the other type of street. But that's something else we have to talk about. Smoke ranch and Torrey Pines, right? 
Um, and so I didn't know if you guys were a part of that project, so obviously that project stopped that unit, which I, I, I applaud that you guys are going out to do something like this. And so maybe when you're ready to paint it, we can look at how we can match that paint to make sure if there is graffiti that it is painted with the right kind of paint to match. So if we, if we can provide and help provide you the paint, then if there's graffiti, then be touched up with the right paint. Exactly. Okay. But, but the other question I have for you guys real quick though is, uh, based on your application match and the request for match, we can't give you no more than what you guys have as a match. So you talked about a lot of community involvement with cleaning up and doing those kind of things, all of the volunteer hours. So I would think that you guys might need to go back and look at your application and match all those volunteer hours with people cleaning, cleaning and doing everything they're going to do for this particular project and really come up with how many hours of volunteer hours and look at that so that you get the proper application grant match how much you're asking for it. because what you have right here is a match of two thousand two hundred eight dollars asking for three three thousand six hundred ninety five dollars. Mm -hmm. So they have to at least match or exceed and based on what you guys are doing it seems like you guys would really exceed that. Okay. So you need to be able to provide that. This is our first year so the calculation process we just weren't real sure about. Right. So you might be able to um, if it's all right uh, chair for them to Submit or to meet with them to find out how they actually should match their response. Um, uh, Member Tucson has a question and then we'll ask the board. Um, there might actually be a couple related questions. Go for it. Right. First question is behind these walls that are damaged and need to be, I assume they're homes, is that yes. correct? Just, the homeowner does not own the wall? Not the perimeter wall. Okay. But it looks like the damage is caused by water in the backyard, the plants mm -hmm. and so forth. Do they have responsibility then for that, for those repairs at all, or is it? It, it isn't listed in our uh, HOA. I mean, I can go back and do the research, but it wasn't listed. From what I know is we're responsible for the walls in between each property and not the perimeter wall, because the other perimeter wall is actually on another HOA, is that an HOA or apartments or something? The reason I ask the question is, is that in typical HOAs, there's a requirement that if a member causes damage to the common area, that they are responsible to for repairs. And I'm not saying that's true in your association, but it might be something you want to check on. Right. And we're both new on the board, so all we knew was, like, in between, that the perimeter really didn't belong to the HOA. Perimeter was the responsibility of the HOA. Yeah, um, remember, sure. yes. um, those perimeter walls are with end up being the responsibility of the homeowner. If somebody ran into those walls, it, it would be the homeowners and their insurance to pretty much okay. fix the wall. So those perimeter walls that face the smoke ramp, if I ran into it or a car ran into it or something that damaged it, that homeowner's insurance and that would be responsible city wouldn't come back in and repair that wall. No, that's normal. That, that's normal for most, I mean, just off right here. Unless you guys, HOA itself. The HOA would takes care of everything on that house, the outside, the roof, uh, the walls, the landscaping in the front yard. Uh, the only thing they do not take care of on that house is the AC unit that's on the roof. Everything on the outside, the HOA takes care of. And the backyard, you take care of your backyard yourself. Are there any other questions? Uh, Larry Schultz, Ward 6. So I'm looking at the back of detail for your, uh, your request, and in this uh, sheet here, you, whoops, you have something here called estimated price five hundred dollars. You have the vendor estimate, which is Protac, which is the painting company, mm -hmm. is thirty one ninety five. But then there says here estimate approximate. What, what is the five hundred dollars? What for? happened was they didn't give us the front of the, the front up here where the wrought iron is. They only did the the, the side of the street that's on okay. Smoke Ranch, and the HOA was supposed to get more bids. Unfortunately, we don't meet until tomorrow night to look at the new adjusted bids. And when I talked to the HOA management company, they said, well, based upon the, the height of that, 
She said you might want to include five hundred dollars more and do an adjustment to your bid when you when you, and have them rebid. Right. But we don't need until tomorrow to. Bids but that's what you believe that extra work will will. That's be. exactly yeah. what we That's all I need to understand. Thank you. Any other final questions? Would the board be willing to accept a revision to include additional volunteer hours or an adjusted revised bid following your HOA meeting that might better meet the actual volunteer hours that you already submitted since apparently you didn't have time to ask your HOA? Larry Schultz, I, I, I believe that whatever adjustments are made have to be aligned with the nature of the project. If it's peripheral activities that are not aligned with the nature of the project, I don't think I would feel comfortable with that. What does that mean? What does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> he wants to make sure that any adjustments that you do make to maybe your volunteer hours, that it is within the scope of what you're requesting from us and not just additional activities that you're tacking on to be able to meet your required amount from us. So but that it's related it's, to your project. Yeah. Right. Well, and that's, that's what this was. It right. was the end of the time celebration with going out and everything and have a clean up day. Who's so, your Yeah, I believe it is. Just goodbye. Okay. And if you could have those two, Alma, she will send us your revision. So if you could do that within 48 hours, that gives you time to meet with your board night. tomorrow night. So, All right. is that amenable to everyone? Mm -hmm. Fantastic. My, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. much. Thank you. at the end of the table for me. There is going to be a flat microphone with a green light on it. Just speak toward it. Feel free to project. Introduce yourself, the name of your community, and off we go. Okay. My name is Martin Saxon. I represent Rachel Bel Air uh, Property Owners Association. And